Rotor valves can be a problem if not well maintained. Let's look at some of the basic nomenclature that we're going to need to maintain our rotor valves. This is the rotor valve itself. This one is from a double French horn. This is the stop arm. This is the bottom bearing, sometimes known as the top bearing, depending on which way you hold your French horn or what instrument we're actually referring to. It could be the exact opposite on a Wagner tuba or a bass tuba. The valve itself, the top bearing or the bottom bearing if we're holding it the other way. The rotor stem screw, also known as the spindle screw. The stop plate. The top plate. And the valve cap itself. Most rotors are slightly tapered narrower toward the stop arm. The casing is represented in red in this picture. This taper ensures a tight fit and allows a repairman a way to tighten a worn valve. Awareness of this taper is also the secret for freeing a frozen rotor. Backing the valve slightly out of the taper allows the player to turn the valve and get it back in operation. Rotor valves are made of brass. When warm breath from the player enters the colder instrument, condensation forms inside. This is like warm breath on a cold window, you can see the condensation. If the instrument is not played for several days, this condensation can cause enough corrosion on the valve that it can freeze up or bind. Think of it this way. If you've seen copper left out in the weather for a period of time, it turns green. Some old buildings have green towers on them, or old houses that have copper gutters, they've turned green. That's corrosion on the copper. Now brass is usually about 70% copper, 30% zinc, so that copper in the brass can corrode and get that greenish color, that corrosion to it. When a valve freezes up, you should not push harder on the lever. You can break a string or damage a lever. Instead, grasp the stop arm in your fingers and turn the valve by the stop arm. If it turns, apply oil. We'll describe that later in this video. When simple turning fails, you're going to need some basic tools. A small rawhide or wooden mallet, a half inch wooden dowel, four to six inches long, and a screwdriver to fit the spindle screw. To loosen a frozen rotor, tap on the stem screw using your half inch wooden dowel and rawhide mallet. Then grasp the stop arm with your fingers and attempt to turn the valve. If it frees up, oil as we describe later. If it is not free, loosen the valve cap a quarter turn. Loosen the stem screw a quarter turn. Repeat the process above. If it is still not free, loosen the valve cap an additional quarter turn. Loosen the stem screw an additional quarter turn. Tap on that stem screw again. Attempt to turn it with your fingers on the stop arm. If it still doesn't free up, take it to a good repairman. If it frees up now, we need to oil it. Rotor valves need oil. There's a top and a bottom bearing on each valve. It is essential to oil these frequently with a good rotor oil. A synthetic oil such as Hetman or Space Filler lasts the longest. It's also very handy to have a needle oiler. The top bearing is under the valve cap and is easily accessible by removing the cap. The bottom bearing can be accessed under the stop arm. You need to place a drop of oil in there with your needle oiler or by putting a drop on the tip of a small screwdriver. Those two spots are the most important to oil. Those are the bearings that the rotor turns on. With that same oil, it's good every now and then to put some oil on the lever rod. There are six places on the lever rod where you can drop some oil in. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are also two places on the thumb valve lever where you can drop in some oil. One, two, flushing rotor valves. It is a good idea to apply a very thin oil through the tubes and onto the rotors themselves. 
Using a very thin oil such as alcas or even deodorized kerosene, pour some oil into each valve through the tuning slides. Try to avoid pouring down the side of the tubes as this can flush slide grease onto the rotor. Some players prefer to put the oil into the slide, then invert the horn, allowing the oil to run down onto the rotor. This avoids flushing slide grease onto the rotor, but it also assumes very clean slide crooks. You decide what's going to work best for you. Once the valve is free and you have successfully oiled the valve and the bearings, tighten the valve cap while tapping it with the rawhide mallet. This resets the top bearing plate. It's even better if you have a nylon bearing setting tool made especially for this purpose. Finally, tighten the stem screw. It is nickel silver, it's not steel. It can break if you over tighten it. Just tighten it firmly. Stringing. For information on stringing a French horn, see our separate video about stringing or consult the resources section at www.wnerschel.com. That's www.wnirschl.com. You can also find supporting documents available online at our wnerschel.com website.